Why? <laughs> this is going to be our dog barkiest episode yet. You know those little dogs that you see in Chinatown that, like, they move a little bit and then they do a backflip? Yeah. Yeah. It's got that vibe. The, the little fake dogs? Yeah, he's really going for that. This is episode 116 of Insert Credit. 116. Part two of the Dirt Bag of Podcasts. Due to further scheduling conflicts, Due to. our 116. console ranking episode is still stewing. So before the end of the year, uh, we're clearing out all of the blank of video game submissions that we have in the backlog submitted by our subscribers to the show at patreon.com slash insert credit. I'm Alex Jaffe. And if I were a dog, I would probably be a Bedouin sheep dog. Nice. I'm Tim Rogers, uh, and if I were a dog, I'm pretty sure I would be um, uh, probably a Yorkshire Terrier, unfortunately. Some poodle jeans in it. I think that would be me. Even though I love Pomeranians and uh, Corgis, that's what I would be. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm admitting something about myself. So I'm Brandon Sheffield, and uh, I also have to admit that there was this time when um, someone who was a friend of Tim's got really upset with me for something that I didn't know about. Uh, I had no idea what it was. And she referred to me as a shivering chihuahua of a man. <laughs> Which, <laughs> wow. Anyway, I'm Brandon Sheffield, and I must admit that I probably am a certain type of chihuahua mix. I get grumpy. I don't like to be touched. I don't usually make noise but when i do it is rumbly and grumbly and growly and kind of stuff and uh pretty small but uh got an outsized personality for the for the stature so i'm I'm pretty sure i'm some sort of a chihuahua mix one of the quieter ones maybe i'm probably a lot like my dog pocket except he's really loud (laughs) does he shiver a lot he doesn't shiver that much he only does because it's cold right now but i'm actually not I'm not like my dog because he loves sports. He loves to wrestle and play and catch balls and just like, it, he's he's 100% a bro. And uh, so we, we differ in that way. You're a more timid chihuahua. Not timid, I'm more a reactive chihuahua. The one that's that's like in the corner and then when you get too close, they're like, ah! That's, that's, that's more like me. Yeah, m- more of a Bay Area chihuahua than a Beverly Hills chihuahua. 100%. All right, well, thank you for joining us for this... Uh kind of lower key episode as we all uh, get ready for the holidays which will be over by the time our listeners listen to this there's gonna be more ho- holidays there's still a dang um what do you call it new year yeah there's still new year i guess our first question is from sailor silica who asks what is the squeezing through the gap while the next room loads for previous eras of video games oh yeah um it's loading screens <laughs> Yeah, basically just loading screens. Probably the um, the Galaxian minigame in Ridge Racer, because you're still doing something. It feels like something. Yeah, it feels like something. You're still doing something, but the game is loading. So it's it's probably that more than it is like the the spinning coin in Uncharted, because it's also the spinning coin in Uncharted, but a little closer to Galaxian, because you, you got input. And you, you can have a little fun while you're doing You can also shimmy back and forth a little bit sometimes and confuse the game. That's fun. Can you imagine if, like, Naughty Dog uh, trademarked or copyrighted the idea of squeezing through a thin passageway so (laughs) so in order to load the next area and didn't let other game developers do it? People would be in trouble. Yeah, that would be bad. Um, Elevator rides, I think, for just the generation literally before this one. That's true. The Mass Effect elevators, yeah. Exactly. I like to make fun of Mass Effect a lot, but the elevators are funny. That you get in the elevator and then that's the loading screen and it just takes a long time. I think that's that's classy, in my yeah, opinion. It's good. You get a little music playing. A bit of a good question. Congratulations on that question, uh, Sailor Silica. Whoever Sailor you are. Silica Jail. Sure. Dilson asks, what is the video game equivalent of a sommelier? Oh. oh a sommelier. A sommelier? There actually is a sommelier uh, DS game in Japan. Do you know about that's this, right. Brandon? I do. I don't have it, but I, I've always been curious about it. It's uh, it's like a sort of a questionnaire where you uh, you poke in. It, it Like you can read about wine on your DS. I mean, okay, it's not a DS game. It's a piece of DS software. Software. Yeah. Yeah, it's like there was there were a lot of those back uh, on the Nintendo DS in Japan. 
Yeah, like the Louvre one. Pocket Louvre? Yeah. Or whatever it was called. Yeah, that sort of thing. There was a ton of that. This next one is from Walt, who asks, What is the Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai across the eighth dimension of video games? My pithy response was, oh, so you mean like a video game I haven't played? I haven't seen that movie. I've seen it a few times. It's one of those movies that, that people bring up whenever they want to bring up like an example of a quirky movie, right? Yeah, here's how I would describe it. I would say my dad liked it, and my dad was proud of liking it when other people didn't like it. But then other people started to well, like now, it. Is it like a common thing that now people love it or what? I think people like it now, but it's, it's just one of those movies that's kind of all over the place. It's sort of a mess. But it's it's a uh, it's interesting in some ways. It had a decent budget. It had well, who who was that guy? It wasn't Ed Harris. Who who was it? Ed Harris. Love Ed Harris. It had, it had Jeff Goldblum. Who the heck was in that? You ever seen Night Riders starring Ed Harris? I don't think I did see that. Should have though. What's that movie that has the subtitle Electric Boogaloo, and then therefore you end up with just any time breaking? There's like a sequel to something. That's Breaking Two. Yeah. Some absolute idiot psychopath sort of moron. Uh, absolute maroon will reply to like we'll just call it something to electric boogaloo just yeah. some absolute bacon joker kind of uh you know those breaking movies have some good uh good music in them i mean yeah that is true uh but i'm talking about the uh, uh i always associate buckaroo bonsai with that uh, i know that that's probably not i know i've seen a lot of dumb bad weird movies i don't know why i haven't seen this one Buckaroo Banzai is a little, it's almost like it was a throwback, even though it was in the 80s. It was sort of already a throwback because he's kind of a cowboy, so it's a little of a cowboy movie, but it's also a racing thing, and also he's going to see aliens. Basically, they get this car that can go inside of things, inside the matter of like a chair or yeah. a wall, and you can go inside of there, and the idea was that they would phase through matter and, and come out the other side, but then they found out that there's a whole world inside of matter and that there's aliens in there or not aliens, I guess, cause they're here, but there's creatures and they don't really want you in there. And then it turns into a whole thing. So that's kind of what it's about. It's sort of a neat idea. All right. And it's kind of a mess and it's kind of got maybe too many oldie time jokes. We're out of time though. So I need your final answer right now. Uh, it is uh, destroy all humans. It's, it's okay. similarly not that funny, but Kind of trying to be funny, kind of throwbacky. It's got too many things going on, so I think it's destroy all humans. Guy's first name is Buckaroo, and mm-hmm. uh, it has the yeah. eighth dimension. Why would they pick the eighth dimension for the title? Seems a little uh, arbitrary, know, a little too cowboyish for me. They skipped yeah, a few. Arbitrary, yeah. They skipped a couple d- dimensions. The thing about Buckaroo Banzai is that it pretends to be kind of a middle entry in a much longer series. That's true, right? So I would say the Buckaroo Banzai of video games is Leisure Suit Larry Five. Okay. okay, because they just skipped over four. Or Final Fantasy VII, as far as uh, all the kids on my college dorm floor were concerned. <laughs> sure. Okay. Somebody literally asked, Final Fantasy VII, is that like a Leonard Part Six thing? Is what somebody literally oh said. Yeah, that's a little. So somebody else in the in the Patreon, please ask what the uh, the the Adventures of Remo Williams of video games is, if you want a, a more exciting <laughs> answer for me. Uh, thanks. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. All right. Thank you. Uh, Goodbye. Thank you. Mox Bagel asks, what is the this restaurant packaged the salt and pepper packets in a bag with the napkin, and now the napkin is all peppery and unpleasant to use of video games? Hmm. Ooh. Is it the Kinect? Hmm. <laughs> Ah. It, because, because I mean, they, people could have done cool stuff with the Kinect, but it had this kind of this miasma around it that made people make subpar stuff just because they had to. I don't think that's quite. Maybe it's more the the Wiimote shovelware is more what it is, where they're like, we got to put this waggle in here, but we only have five dollars. Yeah, it's more like that. I think. I mean, I don't know, but those those salt and pepper packets that come in the little plastic uh, containers. Uh, the little paper salt and pepper packets that are for some reason always, it's always two cylinders, right? Mm-hmm. It's always like two little chambers of salt of salt and two little chambers of pepper and you pop it. Oh, why is it yeah. always two chambers? Well, it's probably because it doesn't pop if it's uh, too thick, right? It's, it's more fun. It only pops because of the, the two little things. And so you're saying that the packet erodes and gets salt and pepper all over the fork and spork? It, it doesn't erode. It's, it's that the smell of it winds up permeating the entire little bag that's got the the fork and the napkins in it and so the the napkin winds up smelling peppery it's just inevitable that that yeah. occurs but i have a suspicion 
that it's just a bad smelling napkin to begin with. It might also n- be like, not deodorized to the extent that other napkins are. It probably just has still the stench of bleach on it. I don't know. In in so much as my life experience allows me to comment on this, it just kind of seems to me like you're asking me what's a thing in video games that uh that people say happens a lot but actually doesn't. It's kind of what it sounds like to me. <laughs> oh, that one does happen. It does happen. I mean, I I mean, I I don't know. I've never noticed this particular thing, but I love pepper. So, make of that what you will. It happens all the time. Tim, it, it's specifically the ones where it's like a plastic package. It's got the knife and fork. It's but like on the mm-hmm. airplane, god darn. I just don't eat the food on the airplane. I starve. Yeah, well, if you open it up, you'll find that in that salt and pepper thing that is it's a napkin that smells intensely of chemical pepper additive or something is what it... That's splitting hairs at that point because the interior of an airplane usually smells like an arm's length away plus maybe a hand's width of diaper you know what i mean so it's like you're just splitting hairs one of of the most powerful feelings in the world is is when the uh the the flight attendant comes by and is like oh would you like a meal sir and you just go no and you're just sitting there dead awake with your just hands folded on your lap just looking dead ahead and you say no nothing for me and they're like okay I got to defend Mox Bagel's question here because I do think that this is a universal enough thing that like you could get a Seinfeld what's the deal with intro out of it and people would be like, yeah, that is right. Yeah, it's something something Larry David would get upset about and then people would tell him he's crazy. It would be a Curb Your Enthusiasm plot. I don't doubt it happens. I'm so I'm just going to say it's kind of like people saying such and such controllers uh, uh d-pad is is not good or whatever when really it is I, that's not that's a horrible answer but this is about one element permeating and and kind of ruining the bunch and so it's yes yeah. it's, it's um, joy con drift yeah oh yeah maybe it's Joy-Con that's drift. good because i never experienced it and then one day i did and it was bad so i'm i'm waiting for my waiting for my pepper packet to really hit me in the face <laughs> Corey it's gonna asks- happen what is the OK computer of video games, and what is the Kid A of video games? Oh, Kid A was uh, was touted quite uh, quite triumphantly in uh, the music press, in the music writing community at the time. And then Radiohead themselves were quoted in so many high-profile interviews as talking about how the record label didn't like it and uh, begged them to make something more uh, mainstream, something more friendly, right? Then uh, I guess that some fans were kind of obnoxious about how much they liked the record, and otherwise it was sort of okay. But in the in the wider scope of of, of actual weird music, it was just kind of it, it was it was definitely not the weirdest music ever. But it was being built up. It was, it was mainstream weird. I think would be the yeah. proper description of it. First of all, I want to say on the record, I like both of those records. Whatever, they're both pretty good. I, I don't go around yelling about how much I like Radiohead in public too often but yeah i think they're cool so what, what's a video game that was like hyped up in the mainstream as being weird yeah, even though if you compare it to actual like indie video games it was nothing what do we got uh, what is there braid uh, braid <laughs> mm, weird oh uh, straight to uh, straight to braid dude i guess like uh res <laughs> res or, or katamari katamari got all those like wacky japan whoa kind of things yeah that's true the res is the okay computer and again, it's it's cool and all, but it's not nearly the big, giant, massive. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to like declare that uh, OK Computer is not uh, a worthwhile piece of music. I'm really digging myself a hole here about Radiohead. Um, yeah, I think Katamari and uh, Rez are good, or Rez and then Katamari are a good combo there. And uh, mm. as as somebody who was compelled to go to a Radiohead concert by someone who couldn't drive themselves. And then fell asleep at said concert. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> My joke answer is uh, OK Computer is the Atari Jaguar because it's just OK. It's not a very okay. good computer. It's not the worst one. OK. And uh, Kid A is Kid Acarus. <laughs> oh, Kid Acarus. Yeah, very good. Kid Accuracy. Yeah, Kid Accuracy. Very good. If you want a more interesting answer, just uh, ask, uh, ask what is the in rainbows of video games. Thank you. All right, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. A patron whose name I lost asks, what are the (laughs) farm-to-table restaurant and microwave dinner of video games? Farmville to Diner Dash. That's my joke. (laughs) Uh, Farmville Farmville to Table. Nice. uh, uh, (laughs) That's uh, an expansion for Farmville 2. 
that lets you build tables. Building a Farmville table in to, Farmville too. Farmville to table is the uh, the lunch buffet that you get at Zynga. I think. Nice. I'll just say I think I think the farm to table of video games is the bespoke video ball that we offered uh, to clients who paid around a thousand dollars to get their office, their corporation, or their organization's branding put onto video ball uh, in their own custom DRM free build that was numbered. I think that's that's the farm to table of video games. I don't know anybody else who offers a service like that. Yeah, I guess that that made me think about the you remember there was this guy who was doing custom wood Neo Geo AES consoles. It, it would just make a here's a rosewood one. Here's one out of walnut and he would make these wood encasings. Yeah. It feels something like that. But I guess farm to table is maybe action button videos would be closer because it's if you uh patronize something and then you get something from it, then that's... Mm-hmm. So maybe it's like Kickstarter or Indiegogo is, hmm. is what the farm-to-table of video games is, although it, that's also for a lot of other things. If you paid for a video game and then you got it directly from its creator with no middle persons on itch.io or whatever, that's kind of farm-to-table yeah, business it online. It raises a bunch of interesting questions, though, because if the game is available somewhere else or anywhere else, uh, right. it kind of cheapens the idea of the farm-to-table... Like commissioning somebody to make a video game for you is, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that doesn't really happen. The closest I can think of is, uh, the, the video ball white label or whatever it was we were calling Maybe it. it's like, you know, butt sniffing pugs or any of those weird controller ones or like line warbler, any of those ones that they make just for a conference and they make it one each time and you can just, you can just have that one and play that experience there and then never again. Oh, it's uh, we're in North Dakota's Carmen San Diego. Like uh, yeah, these yeah, things where? made for very specific markets. But you can get that again now. You could get that anywhere. Not as it was originally intended, though. I think it's line warbler. All right, it's line. And what about the microwavable dinner of video games? Oh, I forgot about that. Farmville. No, uh, Farmville. just basically. Uh, it's all the rest. Mobile games. I don't know about mobile games. Uh, uh, if it's a mobile games, I think uh, just a good, fun video game, a microwave dinner of video games. There's so many games on the PlayStation Two that feel like uh, if you play them now, it's like having a microwave. Yeah, I, don't know I think. What games I'm thinking. I think it's got like a microwave dinner of video games has to be something where it's like it's not the best, but you know what you're getting, and you know it's going to be the same every time. So it's like I don't know, Harvest Moon is kind of like one of those. Where oh yeah. Speaking of farm, it's like table. over the years, it's gotten slightly worse and it hasn't learned anything from modern video games. But you know what you're getting? It's about the same. Just to time. clarify for everybody, uh, Harvest Moon is no longer Harvest Moon. Story of Seasons is Harvest right. Moon. Harvest yeah. Moon is uh, something is, else. Is a, a zombie shell uh, being made not by any of the original creators. If you want to play a new Harvest Moon game, it's called Story of Seasons. And yeah. they're still pretty delightful. I mean, I'm a big, huge Dragon Quest fan, but uh, I feel like those Dragon Quest Builders games kind of feel like a bit of a microwave dinner where I can sit down and just have myself a good time. And I just know it's, uh, I know exactly what I'm going to get to grind my dudes up in there. I mean, Dragon Quest itself is uh, is something far beyond a microwave dinner, but we need not get into that, Jerry. Well, then Dragon Quest is the more artisanal meal that is being replicated by the microwave dinner that is Dragon Quest. Yes. In that case. That's exactly what it is. Like, have you played those Dragon Quest builders, Brandon? First of all, I think Only you'd like bit. them if you. I think you'd like that second one if you played it. It's a very breezy. It very much contains everything that you get out of Dragon Quest is in there somewhere, yeah. uh, and it's presented in a nice little compartment. So I feel like it really is a a microwave dinner video game. Doesn't make it bad. Don't yeah. Don't jump on my inbox like a clown trample. I microwave my dinner sometimes. I get these uh, El yeah, Monterey chimichangas. Those are pretty good. Wonderful chimichangas. I like El Monterey brand products. Yeah. Yuji asks, yeah. what is the Joe Perra talks with you of video games? Never seen that show. Depends on what that is, yeah. Oh, it's such a good <laughs> show. It, it's a show that kind of takes place by the Great Lakes, hosted by a very gentle comedian who talks directly to the audience it's kind of a kind of a mr rogers for grown-ups like uh the f- whole first episode is about minerals and there's a whole episode about uh choosing your breakfast order and it- it's just a very chill time okay so it's not not dissimilar from like what's the bob ross of well first of all mr rogers for grown-ups or video game fans is is action button reviews as i've pointed out in my reviews putting that out there 
It's, it's genetics, Jerry. I've got the DNA. Can't argue with me on this. Uh, citation needed. Well, I mean, look at his last name. I've got the citation. <laughs> I've got a citation <laughs> over here somewhere. Uh, so I don't really know about that show, but it does. it's one of those shows people keep telling me to watch. It's good. Yeah, and I assume it's probably probably something I'd like. Well, until you said the thing about it being all soft-spoken, nice hangout thing, I was going to say it should be Michigan because you're talking about those Great Lakes. But I um, guess it's not that. It's something a little milder, but a little educational. So maybe it's where in South Dakota is Carmen No, it, it's more like kind of a North. psychic refresh. Um, I, I feel like it's a little bit like the coffee break in Earthbound or maybe like fishing in Stardew Valley. Adultswim.com, the top Google search result for Joe Para Talks With You. They have a two-sentence description, and I'll read this. Joe Para talks you to sleep. Joe Para makes an honest attempt to talk you to sleep using mild jokes and low-key stories. That's the official series description on Adult Swim. That was the description for the pilot, I suppose. But it is kind of indicative of the whole vibe. Yeah, that's the name of the first episode, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, talking you to sleep, taking you to breakfast, sitting with you, uh, these various episodes. I think this is interesting. Yeah, I know yeah. this. I, I mean, yeah, I've, I have been, I've wanted to watch this show, and I just never have. It seems cool. Sounds uh, like something I wouldn't like to me. It's possible I would like it. I think you should try it. They're only 15-minute episodes. You might as well. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'll give it a try. I don't like ASMR. If it's any... if It's, it's only any, mildly like overlaps with that. All right, so maybe we'll circle back to that one when one of our panelists has more experience with the show. We'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm just uh, reading what people say about this show, and it sounds like there should be a video game that does this. Yeah. I don't know specifically what... Like, there's Animal Crossing, but I don't have time to talk about what I think about Animal Crossing now. <laughs> Animal Crossing's just a low-key, chill game where you log on mm-hmm. and do your chores. That's somewhat close, but I don't think that's it. We don't have time for that. We need have time for uh, addressing Roman's question, who asks... What is the 1989 Velvet Revolution of video games? Shoot. Yeah, we're, we're talking about the, um, the, the revolution in the Czech Republic? Yeah. Yeah, in the Czech Republic. Is that the one that made Czechoslovakia become the Czech Republic? Or is it not? Is that the, no, it, was that later? No. It, yeah, that was uh, four years later, I guess, or three and a half. Okay, no, wait, wait it's, it, it, it set it up, though. It's what, it's what essentially paved the way for that, isn't it? So, I, I mean, suppose. It, yeah, four, I think it took, so. It, it, took, it took four years for them to split. After that, yeah. isn't that kind of a, about how long it takes for like literally anything to get done? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. The Velvet Revolution. Let's see. So a soft revolution and a peaceful transition of power. Man, I, it's hard to think about what that of video games is. Nothing. I don't think video games have ever done anything that important. <laughs> so it's it's hard to put them in the same sphere for me. Is there any video game company that uh? But yeah, one that one that eventually split apart. I, I've, there's the opposite. Square and Enix joining together. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's the merger of Square and Enix. Oh, that's good. maybe it's a uh, the partnership of Square and Electronic Arts. Where does everybody remember that for a while Square and Electronic Arts were the same company in the United States? Yeah, for yeah. like a couple of years. Or Square games were released by Square Electronic Arts. Yeah, maybe it's that. Could be that, and then they split apart again. I think it just sort of expired. Ugh, yeah, the Velvet Revolution. It mm. was about kicking. It was about kicking out the communists, wasn't it? It was. I wonder. This this has nothing to do with communists, but I wonder if it's um, Sega's transition from a hardware and software company to just a software company, and then making games for everyone else. That could be. Yeah, it. moving from no, one that's, party that's rule true. to uh, to democracy. I think that's kind of right. Like that. Sega was no longer for one console than they were for everybody. That does sound like the closest thing we've uh, posited so far. That's all I got. I'm comfortable with that. Chopemon asks, what is the Chinese food buffet of video games? Oh, well, I'm just going to say I've seldom had like a, a good experience at a Chinese food buffet, but I love having Chinese food. Yeah, I haven't had a good experience at any buffet, regardless of the, like, I love Ethiopian and Eritrean food. But when you go to the buffet that's cheaper, it's just like all your all your favorites are there, but they're also just like swimming in oil goop on t- on top of like you really got to filter through to get to the to the good stuff in the buffet because it's just the way it's being warmed turns everything into kind of a soup or a stew 
all the flavors intermingle too much. It's just a little wrong. Every time I've ever been to a Chinese food buffet, or a buffet, as uh, some people would pronounce it. Jimmy Buffet. It's always, it's always, <laughs> there's always like one thing that I latch onto, and I'm like, well, I've got to eat here. Yeah, I guess I'll eat this one. I'll, I'll eat this one thing, and just a bunch of it. It's usually like fried rice. I get on board with that. What's a video game situation that has a bunch of stuff just generally, and then I just kind of stick? I mean, for the like for the Assassin's Creed games, I stick to the story. The story, the fried rice. It'd be like somebody who really just likes the the baseball mini game of yeah. Oh wait, actually, I do know what it <laughs> what what that is. Um, Brent Porter of Necrosoft Games and also Action Button is uh, yeah, I know that guy has played s- several of the Yakuza games. A little bit, but primarily he's just played the one where you can unlock virtual on, and he played Kiwami it until two. you. Yeah, he played Kiwami Two until you could play virtual on, and then just played virtual on in the game after that. Yeah, that's a so virtual on in Yakuza Kiwami. Sounds yeah. Kiwami when you're on this. No whammy. Uh, yeah, Yakuza Ki- Kiwami Two. Uh, that's the Chinese food buffet video game. It, yeah. yeah, it's a uh, it's a uh, playing Sega arcade classics. I would just say it's any Sega arcade classic when played inside of a Yakuza. Yeah. Even though the Yakuza games are really good, unlike Chinese buffets. <laughs> it's like uh, getting excited about uh, Fighters Mega Mix, or Fighting Vipers, sorry. Fighting Vipers being the first judgment in yeah. 4K60. That's, that's, that's basically fair. it. Uh, we'll do one more before break. Uh, Dusty asks, what is the DMC DeLorean of video games? <laughs> uh, a car that is iconic to everybody. But uh, not that good, and really only people who were um, 14 in the 80s actually like it, and is incredibly expensive uh, as a result. And it's driven by uh, the guy who wrote the Ready Player One. Indeed. Go ahead, give it to him. He's rich. He's making Ready Player Two. Ernest Come on. Klein. The DeLorean was also in Back to the Future. Correct. It's something where, like, everyone was into it, but... The everyone that was into it was all the most basic people. So it's like it's like the college kids during my high school experience being like, "You got that 2K? Um, oh yeah, with with the Dreamcast or whatever." Um, I'm sure there's a better. It, uh, I don't know. Is it is it is it is it people saying poggers? Is is that what it is? Well, it's I don't like, know. I I feel like it's like it's like something that came out a long time ago and was not necessarily super big. And then it had some sort of ironic appeal to a specific oh, yeah. sort of person. It, it and then, then later, an it's real famous. Yeah. I kind of wish Frank was here for this one. So like Atari's E.T. Yeah. or something like that. Is, yeah, is, I, uh, think, I think it's something like that. that had to be like artificially driven up uh, in the collector's market, despite not being very good or even important. And I feel like Frank would have yeah. some insight mm-hmm. on that. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I think the Atari 2600... E.T. is pretty good for that one. Yeah. Um, but you might also have... The reason like... everybody likes that is because it's legendarily bad, whereas uh, there's a reputation around the DeLorean that it's cool. Well, yeah, but it's it's not too different because the, the DeLorean also had a reputation for being bad at the time, and that's why it, it failed. Like it, It's a it, car made out of stainless steel, right? Oh, I know what it is. It's Far Cry what is it? what is Blood it? Dragon. Oh, yeah. Or a Double Dragon Neon. Was that made out of stainless steel? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Steelbook Edition. Right. Uh, in that it's kind of cashing on that uh, pseudo coolness of the 80s aesthetic. Yeah, but that only works for the modern part, not the uh, not the old part. It'd have to be something yeah. where it was like, if Bubsy had, had um, cultural cachet with right. m- um, my grandpa today or something like that. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's like the Simpsons arcade game. In that, like, people, like, rush to get those custom cabinets for their houses despite not really being that good a game. That's pretty good. I think it, it could, though, be the um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade. Yeah. It's, it's hilarious how you'll see people be like, why don't they just do that again? And then you look at the history of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games, and they've continued to try. Like, there's been a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game, like, every three or so years since then it just none of them have ever taken on but that one still has this outsized opinion uh as as being really good let's do one more question before the break okay tate vulture asks what is the british accent of video games 
<laughs> oh my god from an american perspective it's got to be from an american well obviously you're asking some americans first of all can i request that the delorean of video games question be put into that the document that you keep of uh that you share with us of questions that we can uh, look at so that possibly we can prepare statements to yes announce at the beginning i will put of, that in the document. future episodes so that in a future episode i might say uh i've prepared a statement in response to the question about what is the DMC DeLorean of video games. That document, right? You have that document, right? Yes, I have 12 questions on that document right now. Okay, good. Uh, that's the Devil a good May document. Cry DeLorean is a... So uh, a British accent from an American perspective makes somebody sound smart. You're more likely to trust a guy. If he has a smart British or accent. evil. It depends. Smart or evil. Or some combination of the two. Yeah. Or uh, you're... Uh, I don't know. How do, how do people who are... like How do conservative people feel about John Oliver? Do they think that guy's evil? Do they think he sounds evil? Whereas Probably. Liberals, I don't think they, they think, think about him at all. Sounds smart. That... Oh, they think about him. Oh, I'm pretty sure they think about him at all. I think they still think John Stewart does The Daily Show. Oh, they probably mm. still do. Oh, yeah. Could well, be. they still think Hillary Clinton is a president, right? President, yeah. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> They're still fighting her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Uh, let's not talk about that here. Uh, the, what is <laughs> the British accent of video games? It's something that, uh, for an American, it gives a game of veneer, a veneer of sophistication. Is it maybe like um, using fake Japanese characters in your video game, like in in Wipeout or whatever, or or other other games where you 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 put like pretend Japanese characters in order to give it a I don't know if veneer is the right word, but a a hint of exoticism. That could be it. It's not specific enough, actually. That's just it's something people I think, do in general. I think it's something simple, like something simple, like lens flares, or uh, yeah, okay, or like rain effects, or whatever. Like having, like what's what's something that? Uh, uh, I mean, a big blue sky kind of makes your game feel fun and exhilarating. The way the way a British accent makes a person sound jolly, evil, or intelligent, right? Maybe it's a <laughs> uh, per pixel lighting in these new. Uh, Octopath Traveler and other um, oh. pixel style games that have shadows. And, yeah, and you know what? And no, that no, no, that's what it is. It's tilt. It's the tilt shift uh, 2D HD or HD 2D. That's such a bad buzzword that that, that particular team has invented. Yeah, 2D HD H. Like it's like it's so impossible to keep it in your brain. Is it 2D HD or HD 2D? I don't know. I know. It, that's hit. what it is. It is 100% the 2D HD, because now it's not just Octopath Traveler. They announced a new game by that team, uh, Project Triangle Strategy, which I, I swear <laughs> to God is going to be released as, as Triangle yeah. Strategy, because Octopath Traveler was Project Octopath Traveler. Uh, never release a game with the word, never like say a game is Project something uh, ever, because you're going to end up releasing it as that. The Fatal Frame games are called Project Zero in England to this day, uh, as a lo nice little aside, uh, which is the worst game name, the worst example I can think of. So it's like, so not only is it Triangle Strategy and Octopath Traveler, that weird tilt-shifted pixel art thing, uh, that chunky pixel art running at 22 frames per second, has infected even that Dragon Quest Three remake uh, being made by Square Enix. A lot of indies are doing it too. Yeah, indies are doing it too. But and I mean, it's not just uh, it, that they're going after the same style. They are. It's the same developer. They're using the the technology, the engine, the asset, like the whatever, whatever it is. They're using their code, Jerry. They're using it. So, uh, <laughs> it's yeah, a good, it's a good, it's a good Babis uh, addition. Yeah, yeah, he. I think that's Babis knows, telling us it's time to take a break. Well, well, I just want to say that yeah, that that HD two D that is the Brit that is p slapping a British accent on an unintelligent video game. As far as Octopath Traveler is concerned, that is definitely an unintelligent person who who you're like struggling to disagree with just because they have a British accent. That's what it is. I like that game, bingo, but but yeah, that's what it is. That's a bingo. My dog <laughs> right, is we'll be yelling. Right back after a quick break. Vividly stop yelling, okay? Don't yell. Okay, you done? Puckett's being uh, uncharacteristically quiet today because he's he's closed in the room that has the heater. So he's uh, he's just okay, curled he up. Okay, he needs to stop jumping on the keyboard on this. Put him on the floor. 
Welcome back to Insert Credit. Our next question is from Chopimon, who asks, what is the hanging up of holiday decorations of video games? Happy home designer. Something my dad does. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> Something my dad would do begrudgingly the day after Thanksgiving every year is that, oh, I got to get the Christmas tree. Secretly, he likes it, but he gets the Christmas tree out of the basement and hauls it up and puts all the decorations up dutifully and then it creates a delightful atmosphere so that's a that's a thing i think it's happy home designer you get requests to do a specific thing and then you can do it your own way but within their parameters and it makes them happy Hmm. i think it's i think it's something like that because you're literally putting decorations up unless you want to get more metaphorical about it yeah i think being metaphorical is cool these are all metaphors or similes I think what comes to mind for me is playing gotcha games like you got to play this before your energy fills up so you're not wasting opportunities to get good stuff for your team of guys. Uh, that yeah. it, it's just an entirely aesthetic thing that you have to de- begrudgingly dedicate time to. I guess it makes sense because you got a yeah. limited window in which to do it um, exactly uh, before it becomes irrelevant. Yeah, I guess you only put the Christmas tree, de- the Christmas tree, and the Christmas decorations or whatever up once a year in the Christmas culture. Yeah, as opposed to this, which is every day. I deleted all of my gotcha games yesterday, and I feel amazing about it. Yeah, it's good. Oh, that's good. It's it's just freed up so much just mental space. And uh my recommendation to listeners is if you're playing a gotcha game, just stop it. Find something else to do. If you're playing a gotcha game, get yourself a nice PC and a Steam yeah. account. And then just get some cool games. The Steam sale is on, Jerry. Yeah, that's what I'm about to do right here. Sometimes you need to, to to like have something else going on while you're waiting for the bus or whatever. I, I don't know. I think I think there's they've got a place in one's life. It's just uh, it's what too bad. What podcasts are for Brandon? It's too bad that they take t- so much. I've daily. got books. You got what? I've got books, books on my phone. I read the books off my phone. I, I don't know. What I'm going to say the holiday decorations of video games. Everybody, first of all, reading a book on your phone is great. I've read thousands of books, literally on paper. And uh, if anybody has the has earned the right to be an elitist about I read real books. It's god darn me, not most of those guys you see out there. And I like reading a book off a phone. I've said this before. Uh, un- yeah. I will inevitably say it again. I think the holiday decorations of video games is equipping your dudes with the materia and such for the final boss of, of an RPG. Oh, yeah. Uh, because uh, you inevitably, uh, despite uh, decades of JRPGs, they have never released one where uh, there's not always some big, long, weird, arduous chore of outfitting your dudes right as you, like, get to the end. In the Final Fantasy VII Remake, you've got all these materia, but you don't have enough to give everybody the one that you want, so you end up have to, having to, like, unequip them from some people and then re-equip them on other people, and it's just this chore. You're untangling lights. Yeah, you're untangling lights. You're, you're decorating your dudes for the occasion of the final boss. Finally using your items at the end of an RPG that you've drinking been hoarding. A, yeah, drinking an, drinking an elixir. Yeah. Uh, you get all those elixirs in Final Fantasy VI, and then you uh drinking them at the end, uh, drinking them during the final battle. You're like, oh, I guess I can just use these now. Yeah. That's Christmas for me. Marshall asks, what is the Ross Dress for Less of video games, and what is the TJ Maxx of video games? But he doesn't ask, what is the Marshalls of video games? Yeah, the Marshalls. I was about to say, the, the Ross Dress for Less of video games is the which video game is most often confused for Marshalls was going to be my answer. Uh, <laughs> I think for me, it's like it's like Far Cry. <laughs> Far Cry uh, uh, 3 uh, and up. I could see that because, because Ross also does have like weird grocery items and like furniture and just a whole bunch of random stuff that you you don't necessarily expect to be in there it's just full of things but they're all kind of done not halfway it's just there's there's a whole bunch of things and not a lot of direction to them it doesn't feel like it's a one specific world view so I, i think i'd buy that have you ever been in a marshall's and then saw a sign and then you were like what this is a ross Hasn't that happened to everybody, right? You're like, oh, I'm in a Ross? What? I thought I went into a Marshalls. So what's a video game where you're just playing it and you're just like, suddenly you realize, oh, I'm actually playing something else. There's a lot of those kinds of, I think all of those AAA big budget games, I actually was just saying this. I have to review a bunch of games for an awards show right now. And so I'm playing a bunch of AAA games. And I keep saying like, if you told me this was one of the other ones, 
I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't question you if mm -hmm. you said that. So yeah, I mean, I was just playing Far Cry 6. It's good. It's good at doing it, all the things that it does. It's like goofy and dumb and way too serious and all those things. But it might as well just be Far Cry 5 or Far Cry 4. It could be Far Cry 5. Or, it could be some other... Far Cry it could, 7. It could be a new approach to Call of Duty or uh, Medal of Honor. If you told me that, I would be like, all right cool they're doing it this way now they're doing an open world call of duty all right if that's the raw stress for less of video games what's the tj max of video games far cry 5 all yeah. right <laughs> fair enough the question at this point would be then what is what is the target of video games in comparison what's the i was in a mire the other day and mire is now kind of like what if target was more like walmart or what if walmart was more like target and i gotta say i like it tj max is Toe Jam and Earl back in the groove? Because uh, thank it's, you, it's TJ right, to the max. What a payoff! Toe Jam to the max. What okay, a yeah. payoff! A dry cleaner for dogs asks, "What is the hoop and trundling of video games?" A hoop and trundly. <laughs> Is is that like that old oldie timey like ball and stick yeah, like, game? Yeah, like hitting the thing, hitting the thing with the uh, with the stick, keeping the ball stand. Yeah, uh, the, exactly. The hoop stand up. That's hoop rolling. It's got a funny British name to it. Yeah, it's called hoop trundling. <laughs> oi oi and so it's a oi oi me bums a governor me hoops a trundling <laughs> yeah right that's, is that what the, it is. that's the full oi oi me bums a governor me hoops a trundling look at me hoop a trundle jump for joy is that basically the the way it goes yeah it's defender can somebody confirm this they, they, they play that game in that one movie that has uh the beatles in it hard day's night oh hdn yeah right right after the scene where uh, ringo's grandpa says a blooming book. And, and I, I was marveling that anyone was upset about books. <laughs> Hates books. Some people, they didn't like them. Uh, you would be tempted to believe that because he's British, he's read millions of them. Yes, because of his accent. Yeah, that's what I thought. When I was, a ch when I was an actual child, I was like, wait, that's a British person. Media has told me they're supposed to be smart. And yet, he does not like books. Man, Hoop and Trundle seems fun, dude. It's an endless runner. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. It's it's probably what, like um Kuru Kuru Kururin game or something. One of those one of those games where you got to like balance the thingy and keep it all keep it right. What do they call that? Irritating stick? Irritating stick, yeah. It's 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 one of those kinds of games where it's like you got to keep something steady, but it's 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 trying its best to unsteady itself. But when you get it in a good in a good zone and you round a corner with it you're like heck yeah i did it yeah. i think there just aren't enough video games that are basically hoop and trundle we need we need a more hoop and trundle like video game I games agree. with less artifice that are more about mechanics yeah, yeah. something like noby noby baby more like that man they mm -hmm. they trundled hoops in ancient greece dude nice now the greeks referred to the hoop as the trochus oh yeah okay uh, <laughs> that's a, that's enough of that you say so wikipedia just making stuff up over here a subscriber whose name i lost asks what is the james joyce's ulysses of video games and what is the alfred lord tennyson's ulysses of video games uh oh uh so james joyce's oh, ulysses often very frequently very frequently talked about uh, uh but most people that you talk to about it haven't read it at least in my experience I've known some quite intelligent people who did not. Has anybody on this show right now read Ulysses? I read the first, maybe second chapter of Ulysses. I did not do it. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I read it. That's all I have to say about it. That's really, really all there I, is to I say. I read that Iliad and I read that Odyssey and I felt like I've, I've put in my time read this stuff. On things <laughs> called Ulysses. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you never got the Magnavox Odyssey. That's why you never got a Honda Odyssey. You're like, uh, I'm, I'm covered. Uh-huh. hundred percent. Although, yeah. ironically, I did go to a, uh, a school whose mascot was the Trojan. So. Ah. Bet you didn't play Super Mario Odyssey, though. No. No, I a did a little Super bit. Super Mario Odyssey! I, I played about as much of that as I did of Yeah, that's the Ulysses of video games. Super Mario Odyssey. <laughs> I think that's more of the Alfred Lord Tennyson's Odyssey, uh, Ulysses of video games. That's fair. I don't know. Yeah, I, d I, I, mean, I will fully admit that I do not know uh, the difference between those, because I haven't read either one. Alfred Lord Tennyson wrote a poem, and uh, the, uh, James Joyce's Ulysses is a big, unwieldy book about it's a big living book. in Dublin. It's about Dublin. Um, it is not, really. I mean, you go into it knowing that it's supposed to be some sort of analog for the Odyssey, and uh, 
I mean, you you better bring a big spoon if you want to <laughs> actually get that out of that book. Let me tell you, if that's what you want, yeah. there's actually a chance your spoon is too big and you need to have a, a smaller spoon. It depends on how much you like the Odyssey. Um, whereas Alfred Lord Tennyson's is a, it's I've read that poem. It's a little one. It's a tiny little one. Hey, you can read it tiny right little now. baby poem. It's not tiny. It's, yeah, you can just read it all off the top of your head. You could read it right now, Brandon, and then you'd be uh, you'd be done with it. Yeah, you could have read this uh, poem uh, by the time this episode is over. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe I will have. Maybe you will. I will say definitively, there has not been anything in video games as interesting as James Joyce's Ulysses uh, for any of the reasons James Joyce's Ulysses is interesting. Hmm. I need not say more on that matter, I believe. I believe I've spoken uh, plainly enough. We need not focus too much on it. Uh, just, there's, yeah, there's nothing that cool. Since this Alfred Lord Tennyson one is mm-hmm. kind of about Ulysses, in a way. Oh, it very much is, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's got Telemachus and everybody in there. It feels like this could be audio logs in a video game that gives you more context. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little um, perhaps dismissive of the, the work, but it does read like lore, like extra bonus lore that you find out about in a certain way. So I'm not sure I guess that's that. my bid. I suppose. It's time for a lightning round of sorts. One listener of ours, Gaga Geens, Uh, submitted six different of video games questions. And once we answer all of those, we will be free and clear until 2022. Here we go. Uh, Gaga Geens asks, what is the Chihuahua of video games? Uh, Nintendo's Chihuahua. Oh, yeah, that's right. (laughs) Okay. It's it's nervous and shivers a lot. Absolutely. What is the Crystal Pepsi of video games? James Pond 2, Robocod. That's something that went away and came back. Did did James Pond come back again recently? Didn't Crystal yes. Crystal Pepsi come yeah, back again? Yeah, it did come okay. back recently. Then it is James Pond. Yeah, and also it is it is a similarly stupid thing. Uh, and I recall in the '90s when Crystal Pepsi was real and purchasable in stores, uh, it was very disgusting to drink. First of all, uh, and if you liked it, you were a freak. Wasn't it cream soda basically? It was uh, basically like a cream soda with a little bit of uh, menthol cigarette uh, and uh, cough medicine in it somewhere. Oh, nice! It was it was it was a highly unpleasant flavor. Scotch tape, kind of an aroma of scotch tape. One mm. of the worst food products to ever pass through uh, pass under the FDA's nose. N- nobody liked it, and people. It was a joke, um, and it was very funny. Uh, to talk about and joke about for many years after. Yeah, Jay Leno loved it. Uh, yeah, Jay Leno is uh, a scam, and uh, uh, yeah, he's just, he's a scam and a fraud. Yeah, no, I mean, he yeah, loves He's still not as bad as Jimmy Fallon. I'm saying it's James Bond <laughs> 2 true. Robocop, because yeah, like that, that was a stupid video game, and uh, yeah, that game was dumb. Previously our candidate for the most medium video game. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. What is the uh, savory aspect of video games? Savory what is the aspect? What? That, that just gelatin made from a meat stock. Yeah. Yeah. I thought all this aspect was savory. That, that's what threw me. But maybe maybe they do it sweet sometimes. Anyway, aspect of video games. I guess you take a video game and then you grind it up into a paste and then you, you sort of distribute it. So I guess that would be something like uh, it's either a mini game thing or any gotcha game. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's that like. It's taxi missions in a Grand Theft Auto game. It's like the optional taxi missions. You get to drive around the city, you get to drive fast, you get to drop people off. Oh, it's missing the fiber and the carbohydrates of the plot and the uh, the more structured missions with shooting. But it's got just your the whole idea of Grand Theft Auto is you're navigating a big city. I like that. That's my answer. That could be all right. Jerry. It, it, Aspic is a standalone product, though, so... Uh... I also feel like it could be that 101. You can, I mean, well, board Crazy games. Taxi is a standalone video game. Yeah, it could be Crazy Taxi. Um, what is the Crombardi High School of video games? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, my my estimation of that is something that a whole lot of people liked that I didn't. Um, so it's uh, Mario. Nintendo, Mario. Yeah. Something that's loud. Something that's loud and uh, really blustery and wacky with a capital W without really having a lot behind it. I assume it's a video game that I only ever heard of via lots of gifs on Twitter several years ago when there was a Kickstarter going that eventually came out. It's probably yeah, one goat, of those. Goat Simulator? One, one of about a hundred of those games. I'm going to say it's Killer Queen because uh, Freddie Mercury is a major character in it. Ah, uh, but Killer Queen's good. Yeah. But I guess some people think Cromarty High yeah, is good. Yeah, I, I think Cromarty High is good. All right. All right. What is the Pizza Hut Bigfoot Pizza of video games? 
Now, was oh. that one extra big or yeah. what? I don't remember that. I, I remember it existing. It was a big, like, uh, rectangular pizza that it was guaranteed a Sasquatch had taken a dump on it. <laughs> uh, doom shotgun sound effect. Uh, yeah. sound effect. Um, it was, uh, that's basically what it was. Man, I sure saw these commercials. I'm watching one right now. It wasn't very good, but it was big. Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. That's a good one. It's known for being very big, but not very good. I shouldn't have watched that commercial while we were uh, doing this. I, <laughs> I hate these things. Was it gross? <laughs> it, no, it was just. I don't like old commercials. It, it brought me right back to my childhood. The camera was zooming all over the place. The children were like tapping their feet at hyper speed and like shaking their heads around and going, oh. Eight ninety nine. Are you out of your mind, etc. Yeah, Something when every like commercial that. had like a boy oing sound for everything. And what if I told you that if you just go visit uh, visit a particular house in the midwestern area, Indianapolis, Indiana, and you turn on the TV, uh, everything is still just as bad. It's just now about health <laughs> insurance, lawyers, uh, accident yeah. lawyers. I wouldn't uh, believe self you. Self injury lawyers. Yeah. It's commercials um, for crypto. Bigfoot pizza was like a big, it, so it's big rectangular pizza that had uh, s more toppings and still cost the same amount as a regular pizza for some reason. Um, so it was probably worse. There was a marketing blitz. It was, it was skinny. It was very thin. It was too thin. Okay. And it was just, it was just the, the, the footprint of it. The size was a, it was a buffet style pizza delivered to your home for the price of a smaller regular pizza. Yeah. So a big. The illusion of value. The illusion of value hiding over something that's not that substantive, but which was very successful in uh, propelling the company in general. So, uh, boy, yeah. that's got to be a lot of video games out there. It's a whole lot of them. Call of Duty Zombies. There we go. Sure. Yeah. Ah, yeah, I it's like the that. zombie yes. mode added to Call of Duty. Yeah. You're, I just want to say that when you play Call of Duty Zombies, it's guaranteed that a Sasquatch took a dump on it. So. Yeah. Yeah, uh, bingo sound effect, nice. doom demon sound effect, yeah. Nice! Alright. <laughs> what is the Festivus of video games? A made-up holiday that's a joke uh, on a single episode of a TV show? Bone Storm? I don't know. Is that yeah, it? Yeah, it could that's, be Bone that's Storm. That's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm taking the question far too technically there, though I believe that can be a correct answer. I like these ones where it can, where there can be a correct answer. It's always very enticing to just jump at that one. Festivus, you air grievances and you gather around an aluminum pole. Isn't that the Festivus? Uh, the yeah, Festivus there are tests of tradition. strength. The airing, the, the test of strength, the airing of grievances. Um, the lack of commercialization. Yeah, the unadorned metal pole. Uh, I think it just sounds like the witness. That's a joke. I don't know what that means. I really don't I know what that, that means. I don't know either, but, yeah. but I buy it. It's an unadorned metal pole of independent video game. That's, it's kind of amounted to somebody airing a grievance, right? And you could certainly imagine uh, the person that came up with it wearing a kilt, a utility kilt, no less. Yes. Mm. In both cases. Yes. Yes. I don't know if that makes uh, Jonathan Blow the Jerry Stiller of video games. I mean, somebody's got to be, right? It's, it is yeah. true. Somebody... Yeah, Somebody we really do be. need one. We really need one. It's a guy named Jerry. <laughs> we can't function without a Jerry Stiller. Yeah, where's a Jerry? Was there a third Jerry on Seinfeld? No, there were well, there were two Larrys. There was Larry there David Larrys. and Larry Charles. Yes, uh, and there were... there's Jerry Seinfeld and Jerry Stiller. Was there a third Jerry? Jerry still there uh, was his name. Uh, I don't think there was a third Jerry, no. All right. I actually didn't realize until right now that Jerry Stiller was Ben Stiller's dad. Oh, he absolutely is. I had no idea about that. They say someone new learns that every day. He was a legend. He certainly knew what he was doing. I put that Seinfeld on in my house. Guy was hilarious on that show. I mean, he, he was, was hilarious in general and other stuff too. But yeah, he was real good. Yeah, he, he certainly came up with a character and then did it. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. He really, really nailed George's dad as a character. Yes. <laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> Who was Italian for some reason. Still can't figure that out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All the benchmarks say Jewish. But that's our show, everybody. Happy holidays. Uh, does anyone have any recommendations before we let everyone go onto the next show on their podcast feed? Oh, yeah. Just get to the, just get out of that feed. Keep going. Yeah. You can do it. My recommendation is listen to some, some more podcasts. Uh, <laughs> that was uh, mine. Get, get on over to the next one. Give it a shot. Uh, you can turn this one <laughs> off now if you want. I'll recommend um, Cellular Shades. You ever, you ever, uh, you know about those? They're a kind of 
of shade or blind that you can get for your for your home. They're they're not slatted, so you can't like peek through them uh, like a nosy person. However, they do block out some of the light without blocking it all out, so that during the day it's still pleasantly sunny. I actually, unfortunately, I need I need absolute blockout for my work during the day. For that, I use curtains. Yeah, I've got I've got ugly curtains and nice. unforgiving windows with the uh, way too short of a top for mounting a curtain rod. So my curtains are rubbing against the ceiling. What do I do, huh? There are blackout blinds also that um B -O -B. those, those pull down guys that you can get that are just a big uh, flat sheet. Those work okay. Yeah, I'm thinking. But anyway, cellular shades. They also have somewhat of an insulating factor, so they'll keep a little warmer in your house if you want that. That's nice, too. Um, but just remember, you got to exercise them every day and, and uh, move them up and down or else they'll get stuck in that position because they're made of paper or fibers. Anyway, they're, they're pretty cool. Look into I it. I live in New York City where the landlord, uh, the owner, well, not the landlord, but the owner of the building controls the heat, and he just turns it up to 85 on November 1st. So I don't really need to keep the cold out. I want the cold getting in. So what do I do, huh? That's a joke. Nobody can recommend anything to help a house in New York. Tim, do you have any recommendations? So, do I? Yeah. Do I have a recommendation? Um, I don't know. Sure. I can't think of anything right now because me have to go bathroom so bad. Uh, That's fine. Uh, <laughs> I may have to go toilet. Um, you know what? You know what? I actually have been, every time I think of a recommendation for this show, I put it in a, in a notes document. And I have, I've like, been doing. Like, I have like 75 of them. And uh, I feel like it could be a fun uh, uh, episode all by itself, the, like a bonus episode, just uh, burning through my recommendation list. Uh, that would be fun. Let's do that sometime. Maybe I recommend people just go ahead and back uh, the Patreon and maybe someday, who knows when, you know, I'm not going to say when, but someday you might uh, see a bonus episode that's uh, just the recommendathon. The recommendathon. That's what it'll be. I called. would recommend generally uh, stop playing gotcha games and read more comics. I would like to recommend that if you're listening to this show on any platform where you can subscribe to or review podcasts, that you do those things. Uh, you could also go to patreon.com slash insert credit, as just mentioned, where you could become a patron to submit your own topics just like this. Maybe cool it on the of video games questions for a while. Uh, get No, and, uh, keep them coming. <laughs> keep them coming. Fine. Uh, you can also access monthly bonus episodes and other exclusive content and secret surprises. You could join us on forums.insertcredit.com and follow us on Twitter for our own personal updates and projects. The show is at Insert Credit. I'm at Alex Jaffe. Tim is at 108. Brandon is at Necrosofty. The show is edited by Esper Quinn <laughs> with music by Kurt Feldman. I'm Jerry Trashcan. Uh, I'm Tim Rogers. I'm Brandon Sheffield. And you have now saved your game. I've got to say, my baby dog just fell asleep after all of that. So he finally, he finally fell asleep.